Joining us now is Johnny Hughes, uh, host of the 3FM Morning Show and also a member of our political is Johnny, good mm. to see you in suit. Good to see you. To... <laughs> <laughs> well, I get, welcome. I get that pun. <laughs> okay. So, what's, what, what, first of all, what, I mean, I'm not sure you are entirely surprised about no, the Supreme Court's decision. Mm. It was one of two things. Either they agree or disagree, mm. and clearly they agreed. So, what are your immediate thoughts on that? For me, I thought that yesterday, I mean, it, this stems from yesterday when Godfrey Yabuadami, who had earlier argued that um, the Speaker of Parliament should not have gotten private counsel to represent him suddenly you know yesterday in the absence of the speaker's council mm. thought that the speaker was being disrespectful to the court i found that strange because if in one breath you said okay he didn't have to bring in a private person now he's brought in a private person and then you find that the private person did not turn up <laughs> then it is disrespectful you know that conundrum for me again for me what this means is that now it is left to the speaker Mind you, there had been an earlier ruling, you know, to, to settle the matter. And this is the main issue, the mm -hmm. preliminary issues. The Speaker of Parliament then, you know, indefinitely postpones or adjourns Parliament. Now this comes down to the Speaker. So, Afinio Makin has what he wanted. The NPP side of the majority now, if you will, have what they want. Mm. They would have to put in a request to the Speaker of Parliament to say, we want a recall of Parliament. They would have to then go under the standing orders. Mm. Now, the question somebody would ask is, why didn't they then, you know, um, complete the processes or, if you like, exhaust all the processes in parliaments that could have used the standing orders mm. to fix this matter? And then they went out to the Supreme Court. Right. Now, they are coming back to parliament. Would they come under the standing orders and would the Speaker of Parliament, you know, listen to them at all? Mm -hmm. You know, these are questions that, that will yeah, always come linger. up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, in, in addition, what this means for me as a layman is that tomorrow if Alexander Afenyo marking as an MPP NP and who is also the leader of the NPP side decides that the MPP in the Futu have not been so fair to him, so he wants to go and run independent, he would come to Parliament and represents the NPP as leader of the side, the majority side. But then he will go out there and then campaign and say, vote against the MPP and its candidate. I find that strange because it sets the wrong precedence, you know, if you will. Knowing full well that yesterday, mm. the Attorney General of the Republic said, uh, a political and, and legal tower like Professor Michael Quay had taken a decision which was unconstitutional. Right. Katie Amon goes on to make the argument that, well, at the time that the decision was taken, they had 169 uh, members on, on the side of the MPP and 106 on the side of the NDC. So really, it wouldn't have been significant. Right. But now they, the stakes are different. 137, 137 mm. plus one independent who's taken a decision. And my dude, it was the same Andrew Siama who was in the conversation right. in the, and the last time that Speaker Okui took the decision. Yeah. So Andrew Siama is gaining perhaps the notoriety, for want of a better expression, for, for each time, you know, this, these kind of this things happening. Mm -hmm. For me, it will be interesting to know what the Speaker will do. Because yesterday, Afenyo Makin stated that the decision to solve this lies in the bosom of the Speaker. Mm. The Speaker has what it takes. President Jay Kufo, in spite of the fact that he tilted towards Afenyo Markin's position, has also said that the Speaker of Parliament, you know, is that. So everybody is yielding to the Speaker. Mm. Will the Speaker budge? I mean, well, an interesting point there, but <clears throat> Johnny, because Johnny touched on the issue on, with the example of the Futu situation, so this was a key issue that Alexander mm -hmm. Fanyamakin mm -hmm. took to the court, and the court actually agreed with him before we come and look at the parliamentary uh, repercussions that he's talking about. So the question of filing of nomination to contest parliamentary seats in the next or ninth parliament does not amount to vacation of seats as a member of parliament in the current eighth parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And so this was at the heart of the issue that he took to the Supreme mm -hmm. Court to say that, look, the fact that you have filed your nomination form does not automatically mean that you are intending to vacate your seat at that point in time. Mm. The Speaker of Parliament took the position that it amounts to vacation because mm -hmm. his argument was that then it means that it renders that constitutional provision <coughs> meaningless. Sorry. On the flip side, to the Attorney General makes the argument that, look, what happens with this particular situation if you don't conclude this way will mean that when you join Parliament as an MPP MP, for instance, mm -hmm. or as an NDC MP, it means that for the life of that parliament, you can never contest the next election in a different capacity because right. the argument is that nominations are always open during the life of the current parliament. Yes. Right. It's always before the elections. And That's so correct. if that is done before the elections, it will mean that if perhaps you decide you want to flip or switch party, you'd have to wait for, for an election. An election. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the nomination would have closed. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the risk <clears> would be that you, start, you end up losing your seat completely in order to be able to contest. But the Supreme Court has adopted 
this particular understanding. And it comes back to Johnny's point about if it was the majority leader, for instance, we know that some of the members of parliament have said that they have been taking off the WhatsApp groups, right. for instance. Right. Yes. If today the MPP MPs are going to have a meeting, a strategy meeting on how to capture seats in central region, mm. will Cynthia Morrison be allowed to participate in mm. that meeting? Right. Mm. Because she's seeking to reduce their seats. Mm. <clears throat> if they are going to have a discussion on how to win the Ashanti region, are they going to allow, um, uh, maybe they will allow um, okay. Andrews, yeah. Andrews, 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 Andrews Siyama, Siyama. Siyama. I mean, allow to, to be part of it. To be yeah. part. But in the Eastern region, would they allow Kojo Asante to join that mm -hmm. discussion? Yeah. And you know, so I think one other argument I picked, or one other point I picked from the argument during the court proceeding mm -hmm. was the fact that the, 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 the Article 97, 1, G and H, which mm -hmm. was now, we fortunately, the Supreme Court has now come to interpret it. We are yet to get the full reasoning behind right. their right. interpretation or how they came to that final decision. Mm -hmm. Hopefully tomorrow we should be getting that. But I get the understanding from the preliminary conversations in the court that whatever the rules say mm -hmm. only work within the lifetime of a sitting parliament. Right. So it does not take future effect. Mm. So which means that those four MPs who decided to stay, uh, to leave their seats right. or to come, come back to parliament, hopefully on another, mm. another political party's ticket or as independent candidates, that decision does not border on the current proceedings but, but see, of the current but parliament. See, but so see, that's what but see, uh, Martin, my understanding uh, earlier, was. Earlier when in the run-up to the uh, MPP's uh, presidential primaries, um, the likes of um, Nano Heninto, Hobson Adoy, and many others had gone in the line of, they, they became Alanites. Mm. The, the MPP's chief scribe, Justin Kudria Vimpon, wrote to them and said that based on certain provisions with, it, it contained in the MPP's constitution, they had forfeited automatically their membership, membership mm. of the MPP. I mean, so that's clear. There's no ambiguity about that. <laughs> if you decide to contest on the ticket of an independent candidate, even though you could be a member of parliament, mm. you, you immediately forfeit your membership, which would mean that then they would have to trigger the processes to, to take you out. Now, we must recognize that the members of parliament were voted for by their constituents, knowing that they represented a certain political party. Mm. And once you become a member of a, a, a parliament, you do no longer represent your party you represent the constituents in the constituency. Right. So now Alexander Afenyomaki and his group are taking a decision that inures only to the benefit of the party and not necessarily to the benefit of the constituents that are being spoken about. Mm. Cynthia Mamley Morrison is NPP in Aguna West, but she represents now both NDC, MPP, CPP, GOM, PNC, whatever Everybody it is, in right. Aguna West. Yeah. So now if you are taking a decision that is tilted towards the NPP. Are you now looking at the larger picture? Are you looking at a skewed view? Mm. You know, that, that conversation, because once you become a member of parliament, you represent the constituency. Yes. You don't represent your party yes. anymore. Yes. If the people might not have voted for you or may not have voted for you, but when you advocate for a bridge, a gutter, mm. a school, whatever it is you know, to be set up, you're doing that because you think that Everybody the constituents in totality will benefit. Now, number two, for me, this, I find this interpretation problematic. I'm not a lawyer, but from a layman's point of mm. view, we can argue and say that, okay, to get into the next parliament, the ninth parliament, you'd have to start the processes now, nomination, vetting, da, 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 da. But the point is that you came into this parliament in a certain capacity. Mm -hmm. So now you cannot then be in that same parliament and seek to say you are singing a different song. That's why I asked the question about Afenio Markin particularly. Can he go now to the people of Efutu if he had not won the primaries or he had not gotten the green light to say that, okay, I came to you, I'm MPP, I'm in parliament, I'm the leader of government business, etc. But now I want to run independent. So mm. by day, he goes to the constituency and is campaigning that vote for me as an independent. The MPP will not take you to mm. the glory land, da, da, da. The NDC will not take you. Then he comes to parliament and he's saying the elephant, he says we need him. How, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, a that's, confu contradictory. that's confusion. Yeah, I think the question would be would the MPP have kept him as majority leader if he had filed to contest the Futu as an independent candidate? That, that's, that's, the bigger, that's even a bigger question because yeah. in parliament, Per their, standing, per their standing orders. I mean, they have, their, they have their way they play their own games in mm. Parliament. So you ask yourself, 
for what this ruling really seeks to achieve. Right. Does it seek to solve the problem that we have now without giving cause to future consequences? Mm. Or does it, does it have future consequences in mind? And that actually brings one of the things I've also been thinking about, that does this then set a precedent mm. to allow people to be able to cross carpet mm. or decide to say so let's say for instance the ninth parliament starts right. and then one mp on either side decides mm -hmm. that look based on the kinds of decisions this side has been taking or uh, the way we've done business mm -hmm. i disagree so i want to now cross to the other side right. what I does mean, that I, trigger I, I, a new set as far of as parliamentary we, proceedings we, that's, or as far as that's, that's a british system yes but that's as, as far as alexander Fenyamakin is concerned mm -hmm. that would mean that you'd have to vacate your seat mm -hmm. because their view which the ag also agreed with mm -hmm. which he advanced was that when you decide, so for instance, in times past, mm -hmm. there have been individuals who stand up and say that I no longer want to caucus with this and I want to go right. and join yeah. the other side. Right. In that instance, they believe that it means that you have to abandon your seat. Mm -hmm. But the argument is that currently those individuals, they've not shifted in terms of the caucus. They are mm -hmm. still staying with the original caucus with which they joined parliament right. with. And so they think that that creates a very different situation from the situation that you alluded to. But as to whether that is should that be... So, so well, yes, see, is that this, so? Yes, yeah, because... So, so let, let's, look at, let's look at this situation. Uh -huh. Let's look at this mm. one here. So this is before the Speaker's declaration. Right. 137, 137, one independent. This is how Parliament was constituted. Mm. After the Speaker's declaration, they took out those who, yes. who since were declared mm. vacant. So it now became 136, 135. We know uh, independent candidate, no need for a by-election. Right. Now we are back here. Mm. The question to ask yourself in the view of Afenia Markin is that... Mm. Uh, Andre Siama, mm -hmm. is he still caucusing with the MPP? So, so, so I'm saying start, that in yes, this current is. parliament, in this current parliament, the only person who could have, who, the, the only person who could have crossed carpet, right? The only person who could have moved to one side or to the other side mm. is Andre Siama in this whole conversation. Absolutely. Right? Now, what we, what we are running also is, um, what do you call it? A hybrid of the British and American system. Mm. That's what we're running. Mm. The British is in power and in opposition. That's what we're running. Mm -hmm. In this particular parliament, the only person who could have said that, I'm no longer doing business with the uh, NPP side, and I'm going crossing carpet to do business with the NDC side, mm. would have been Andre Esiama, because he came to parliament as an independent person. Right. Originally, he was MPP. He got disgruntled, he went on the independent ticket, and then the rest, they say, is history. history. But in this parliament, the situation you described, he is the only person who could have moved up because and he's down. he's independent. Thank you. Mm. Cynthia Mamley Morrison couldn't have done that. Aka couldn't have done that. Mm. Same for Asante and Soum. They could, they, none, none of I them mean, could so have done all, that. All those are matters that, I mean, once the full decision comes out, because even an interesting point to note is that in the writ that Afenia Markin actually filed, he actually didn't make reference to that main fee gentleman. Right. Mm. They left him out. They stuck to their own three mm. members of parliament yeah. and made requests on their behalf. But obviously, the court has concluded in a manner that affects everyone. And we're right. expecting uh, that full decision to come out tomorrow to right. address all of these issues, the practicalities of it. Mm. Hopefully, there will be some clarity on what it means, particularly going into this year's election and even for subsequent elections on what it means when we have this situation playing out in any such instance. Certainly, it's uh, part of a growing our democracy. And uh, what we've been discussing in the last few minutes has to do with the fact that we, uh, by uh, a Supreme Court, has just decided that we have five Supreme Court judges who have decided to rule in favor, more or less, or adopt the, uh, the, the, the rate that was put before it by Alexander Fenyamarkin asking the Supreme Court to, first of all, interpret Article 97.1 G and H. And um, after their deliberations and internal discussions, they have come to the conclusion that five of them, out of the seven, five of them have agreed that what Fenyamarkin brought to them to interpret actually stands, and that Speaker Bagbing was wrong in declaring four seats vacant. Two of the judges dissented from that decision, and tomorrow, hopefully, around the same time, we should be having the full judgment, and then we can read and bring you better and further understanding or interpretation of what the Supreme Court, or how they arrived at that final decision.